So friends, we're gonna do a Justice Matters lightning round today. Topic one, why was there no search warrant conducted at Bedminster, Trump's New Jersey golf club? Topic two, why hasn't Trump been charged with any of the crimes he appears to have committed in New Jersey at his golf club, Bedminster? Topic three, why is there only one co-conspirator charged together with Donald Trump in the Florida federal case? And topic four, Donald Trump's mouth, a target-rich environment for special counsel Jack Smith. We're gonna take on all those stories today because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, let's take on a few topics that have been kicking around in recent days, all related in one way or another to the Trump trials. So friends, today's video is gonna be a, a lightning round of sorts. But before I start, if you'll indulge me, just 30 seconds of housekeeping. As you may know, here at Justice Matters, we are an all volunteer operation. We're up and running seven days a week, posting a legal analysis video every day, and we couldn't do it without your support. So if you're interested in more formally supporting our all volunteer efforts, our mission, our content, please feel free to come on over to patreon.com. You can sign up to become a patron and if you do, I'll send you some Team Justice and Justice Matters stickers and a personal handwritten note of thanks. And thank you to the many of you who have joined us over on Patreon. We could not do this without your support. Okay, friends, topic number one. Why has there been no search warrant at Bedminster, Donald Trump's third-rate New Jersey golf club? We've all seen the evidence now in the indictment in Florida that was unsealed, Donald Trump seems to have been engaged in classified documents crimes, including disclosing, disseminating national defense information, which falls under the Espionage Act. He seems to have done these things in New Jersey at his golf club, but I have had the question posed so many times, why did the FBI never search Bedminster? And it's a great question and one that we don't have a concrete answer to, but let me try to talk you through what my experiences were as a prosecutor for 30 years, among other things, evaluating search warrants and affidavits in support of search warrants and deciding whether there was or was not probable cause. And then once I decided there was, the next step was for the agent, the detective, the investigator to go to the judge and um, formally apply for a search warrant. But first it had to come through the prosecutor and we had to assess whether it did or did not have probable cause supporting the request for the search warrant. Here's the best that I can sort of puzzle out because it is a curiosity. You know, we know about these crimes that Donald Trump committed at Bedminster that were disclosed in um, the recently unsealed indictment down in Florida, but Bedminster was never searched by the FBI? Here is the word for the day, fresh. Why fresh? Information that agents, detectives, investigators put in a, a sworn statement, an affidavit that they draft up in support of asking a judge to issue a search warrant has to be fresh. It can't be stale. So just stick with me. I'm gonna present a hypothetical to you that might explain why the FBI never got a search warrant for Bedminster. Let's assume that by the time they learned about Donald Trump's crimes um, at his club in New Jersey, Bedminster, by the time they learned about them, you know, when they were um, subpoenaing documents and putting witnesses before the grand jury and they ultimately learned, my goodness, he not only had classified documents and national defense information at um, Mar-a-Lago that he was unlawfully retaining, we've now learned that he had some up in Bedminster and that he was showing them to people. 
Let's assume by the time they learned that, they had also heard and learned from witnesses that all of the boxes, all of the classified documents that Donald Trump had taken from Mar-a-Lago up to Bedminster had been transferred, transported back to Mar-a-Lago, such that the FBI could no longer go to a judge and say, we have fresh, current information that Donald Trump still has documents at Bedminster, so please, judge, issue a search warrant. They would have to put in that affidavit, in that sworn statement to the judge that, you know, we have since learned that all of the boxes and the materials he had at Bedminster were returned to Mar-a-Lago, and that is where he is now illegally concealing them, hiding them from the federal government, violating a grand jury subpoena by not returning them. In which case, friends, the FBI couldn't go to the judge and say, but you know what? give us a search warrant for Bedminster anyway, because the information has to be fresh, not stale. That's only one possibility, right? What I think less likely is that, the, you know, all the federal prosecutors were just kind of negligent. They didn't bother getting a search warrant for Bedminster. I don't buy that. I mean, they got one for Mar-a-Lago, a little late, better late than never, but maybe by the time they would have been a posi in a position to try to get one for Bedminster, the, the evidence, the information was stale. It wasn't fresh. That's about the best I can come up with. And I think we will learn more about that in the weeks and the months to come. But um, it's, hard, it's hard to explain why if they got a search warrant for Mar-a-Lago and it seems like everyone ultimately knew he also had documents at Bedminster, why didn't they search Bedminster? I think it's because they didn't believe they had enough evidence to persuade a judge there was probable cause at the time to get a search warrant for Bedminster. Okay, let's turn to topic number two, related to topic number one. Um, people want to know why hasn't Donald Trump been charged with the crimes he committed in New Jersey at his Bedminster golf court, golf club, because we now know he did have documents there. I mean, we read about that in the indictment that was just unsealed down in Florida. You know, he was disseminating that information, it seems, to all sorts of people, members of his PAC and uh, aides and um, uh, authors who were writing a book about Mark Meadows. Um, why hasn't he been charged with those crimes? I've heard people say things like, boy, I hope Jack Smith has a plan B for those crimes. You know what my take is, friends? This is all part of Jack Smith's plan A. One unified plan to hold Donald Trump accountable for all of his crimes. You've heard me say before that I'm not a betting man. I am not a high roller. One dollar is my betting limit. I will bet my buck that we will see charges brought against Donald Trump in federal district court in New Jersey for the crimes that we have seen disclosed in his Florida indictment. I cannot imagine Jack Smith is just going to give him a pass on those espionage crimes, those crimes by which he disclosed, disseminated national defense information. Trump ain't going to get a pass on that. This is all part of the plan. I predict special counsel Jack Smith will bring the charges in the order he thinks it makes the most sense. And I do not believe all of a sudden they're caught short because Judge Cannon, Aileen Cannon, is not yet removed herself from the case. Um, and so they're scrambling and now maybe they're thinking about, well, maybe we should charge him in New Jersey. No, this is not a plan B scenario. This is all plan A. And I believe Jack Smith and his team of prosecutors, they've got this. Okay, third topic. I've heard some people ask, why is there only one co-conspirator charged together with Donald Trump in Florida? I mean, is Walt Nauda really the only person who participated in Donald Trump's crimes, who assisted him, who conspired with him to unlawfully retain these documents and hide them from the grand jury and from the FBI and from the DOJ and from his own lawyers? still blows my mind that Donald Trump and Walt Nauta were hiding the classified documents from Trump's own lawyers 
who were searching for them so they could give them back to the federal government, comply with the subpoena, protect the interests of Donald Trump, and he's hiding them from his own lawyers? That's why his lawyers are going to be some of the most sharply incriminating, damning witnesses against Donald Trump at trial. It's a beautiful thing. But is Walt Nauta really the only person who participated in Trump's crimes? Okay, there are four possibilities here, friends. Let's tick through them quickly. One, yes, Walt Nauta is the only one who participated, assisted, aided and abetted, facilitated Donald Trump's crimes, conspired with Donald Trump to commit, commit these crimes. He's the only person. Really? I would put the likelihood of that somewhere between extremely unlikely and not a snowball's chance in hell. But it's possible. Maybe it was just Walt and Donnie ride or die together. You know, the only two who were in this corrupt scheme, this conspiracy. Possibility number two, I think is more likely. That is that as Jack Smith has investigated these crimes, he's found other people who were culpably involved. Other people who probably committed crimes with Donald Trump as part of the conspiracy, helped him, aided and abetted him, facilitated his crimes. But Jack Smith may have assessed that their culpability is relatively low. And you know what? The public interest doesn't necessarily demand that these low-level co-conspirators are criminally charged with their crimes. So instead, Jack Smith may have decided to grant them immunity compel them to testify in the grand jury and incriminate Donald Trump. Essentially, given some of the low-level people a pass, they won't be prosecuted, but they have to testify truthfully about the crimes of Donald Trump and others. I think that's likely. There may be some immunized witnesses out there. The third possibility is that there may be witnesses who were more culpably involved, not like really low-level box movers who kind of knew they were doing wrong, but, you know, aren't really big enough fish to, to have to prosecute, gave them immunity. Maybe there are some that are kind of mid-level. And maybe Jack Smith assessed that, you know what, these, these people need to be prosecuted, I'm not just going to give them immunity. So what we'll do is we'll enter into a guilty plea with cooperation, and we'll do it under seal. We will seal it until such time as we are required to ask the court to unseal it. We can take guilty pleas. We can do certain things in court and keep them under seal, keep them hidden from public view until such time as a judge orders them unsealed. And that time would be, you know, generally in the run-up to trial when you need to turn these things over to the defense attorneys so they can prepare to cross-examine witnesses like this. It could be that we don't see those persons named as defendants in the conspiracy indictment because their pleas and their cooperation is still under seal. And maybe um, it will become unsealed at the appropriate time and then we'll learn about it. That's the third possibility as to why it's only Walt and Donnie in the indictment. The fourth possibility is there may be more co-conspirators. There may be lots of co-conspirators out there who participated in the crimes of Donald Trump, but Jack Smith is still working on them. Maybe he's still trying to win their cooperation, convince them to plead guilty and cooperate. And if they do, well, then they might enter those sealed guilty pleas like some of the others we were just discussing. Or if they don't, well, then they might end up named co-defendants, co-conspirators, in a future superseding indictment. Because sometimes in big cases, the prosecutors, I've done this, will ask the grand jury to vote on certain charges and indict certain co-defendants, co-conspirators. The investigation will continue and then the indictment will build and there will be a subsequent or superseding indictment that adds more charges or adds more co-defendants, more co-conspirators. So there are four possible reasons why the Florida federal indictment contains only two co-conspirators. You know, Walt and Donnie, and Walt and Donnie are going down. So 
here's the last topic I want to discuss. I know we're packing a lot into today's Justice Matters video, but this one is really kind of fun. And it's based on some recent reporting from the Philadelphia Inquirer. And what it makes clear is that Donald Trump's mouth is a target rich environment for special counsel Jack Smith. Here is the reporting from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Headline, POTUS just called me. Pennsylvania GOP emails shed new light on 2020 election upheaval. The emails show how conspiracy theories permeated the legislature. One lawmaker said a fellow Republican was spreading crap and hurting our party by trying to invalidate millions of votes. And that article begins, in mid-December 2020, even Pennsylvania State Senator Doug Mastriano apparently had some doubts about the latest plan hatched by Donald Trump's inner circle to select fake electoral college electors in an attempt to reverse the results of the presidential election. The right-wing Senator Mastriano had heard from other Republicans that the scheme might be illegal. In the words of lawyer Christina Bob, then a One America News anchor who later joined Trump's legal team. Quote, Mastriano needs a call from the mayor. This needs to be done. Talk to him about legalities of what they're doing, Christina Bob wrote on December 12, 2020, to Trump advisors, referring to Rudy Giuliani, the former mayor of New York City. That email and others from Trump's team were reported last summer by the New York Times, but previously unreported communications obtained by the Inquirer show that two days after Bob's email, Trump himself called Mastriano, this time peddling lies about Dominion voting machines. Uh-oh, Mastriano wrote. So friends, let's go back up to the headline. Uh, POTUS just called me. Donald Trump's mouth is a target-rich environment for Jack Smith. I mean, if Trump's lips are moving, he's either lying or he's contradicting something he said previously or both. This phone call that Trump placed to Mastriano and every other phone call that Trump made between the time he lost the election in November of 2020 and the time he ordered the attack on the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021, every single phone call, I strongly suspect has been the subject of grand jury testimony. Because Jack Smith would have subpoenaed, either he has subpoenaed or he will subpoena every last person that Donald Trump called, you know, recruiting them, encouraging them to join his corrupt scheme to override the expressed will of the American voters, to deny Joe Biden his rightful election win, and to unlawfully and unconstitutionally retain the power of the presidency. And friends, for all of that, Donald Trump is gonna get got because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.